8.30. Time to call our meeting to order for Monday, August the 13th. Carl? Council Member Remley? Here. Ronane? Here. Lundsman? Here. Slate Hansen? Here. Johnson? Here. Bunsness? Olson? Here. Rux? Here. Mayor Leveson? Here. Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we start, one uh, change in the agenda, item C under new business, uh, an application uh, for a liquor license has been uh, withdrawn for this evening, so cross item C off of your list there. Uh, so we entertain a motion to approve the minutes of last Monday. Second. second. Motion business second uh, by Remley. Uh, Carl, we've got somebody on the phone, so we need a roll call, please. Councilmember Remley? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Slate Hansen? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Bunsness? Aye. Olson? Aye. Rux? Aye. Mayor Leveson? Aye. Motion carries. Consent calendar has routine city business items A through E. Moved. Second. Motion Ronane second by Remley. Questions on any of those? All in favor then say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. I skipped over open forum. Uh, Mike is here from the Development Corp, and I told him that uh, if he had comments, he could make them when we got the new business. Uh, and that's where we are. Ordinance uh, 180801, expanding number of projects eligible for sales tax refund. Uh, Lynn, do you want this introduction? Actually, uh, <laughs> Ron is the one that drafted the ordinance. Okay. Did explanation. Okay. See that bus coming? <laughs> then I'll try to jump out of the way. Pass the bar. Initially, what I'd like to do is ask the council that um, uh, if if there is a motion to uh, approve the the ordinance that does not involve a revision of any of the language in blue, I would ask that the motion. Uh, moved just uh, just past uh, 50 93 and 50 96 as we're showing the changes on here the reason for putting the language in blue is to just give the council some context it's a little easier to understand uh, but the, all the language in blue none, none of that has been changed so it doesn't need to be in in this particular ordinance if, if uh, there is a motion to approve for first reading I'm sorry would you do that again um, what are you saying? The language in blue, none of it has been changed. Right. That's the existing ordinance. So it doesn't really need to be in here, in, in here, and we can remove that for purposes of first reading if, if there's no changes to any of the language in blue. I see. I'm sorry. Yeah. I got what you're saying. Thank um, you. I just thought it would be a little easier for, for the reader to understand the context of what's happening with 5093 and 5096. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'll be honest with you, I, I would like to do this in the future. I think it's a little easier for people to understand if they s have a little more of the sections around uh, these, uh, these revised sections. Um, How is so this different from before when we just did the, what you were changing in red and everything else stayed the same? Well, because it's what we now. have is we have an entire blue. division <laughs> that's being impacted by the changes to these two. Okay. Um, but you might not note that unless you see the uh, the rest of the language. Okay. Okay. Just curious. <laughs> so now on to so the substantive portion of this. So uh, red line's gone. Yeah. <laughs> if, if there's any changes at second reading, then you will see red lines. Okay. Yeah. So uh, for first reading, however, uh, we had been tasked with uh, uh, revising the uh, section on the sales tax refund to reflect requested changes uh, by Mike Bockerney a few weeks ago uh, to uh, make the sales tax refund available to, to more projects and to uh, make that the potential refund of 100%. Uh, the administration, after looking through that and going through uh, an analysis of, of what's out there, and I will also note that we were directed specifically to a program that Brookings uses uh, that's uh, essentially a grant program uh, for its uh, sales tax refunds. They don't call it the refund, they call it a grant. Uh, but they're using sales tax dollars and allowing uh, for a refund of, of a portion of those sales tax dollars. And Brookings, in that grant process, established some evaluation criteria that don't rely on a, a dollar amount that, that 
that uh, we have in our current ordinance, which was modeled after the Sioux Falls ordinance. And that, and that frankly, deals with larger projects, the $10 million mm -hmm. for uh, um, uh, non-realty capital uh, acquisitions, $5 million if there's actually a, a, a property uh, value increase, and that, of course, generates sales tax dollars, or I'm sorry, property tax dollars for the city. Um, and so those were the, the large projects. So now we got into looking at what uh, what a city like Brookings would would do, and that was the the language that Mr. Bockerney was was asking uh, that we incorporate in here. And what we've done at 50-93 is we've we've established the two types of projects. One is the original projects with the large, which we'll call the large projects, and then we've established a second at 1B for smaller projects, and those would be projects that include at least 20% of the dollar amounts above. So we'd be, we still be, would be looking at $1.25 million in taxable value, or a $2 million in non-realty capital assets, or a combination of $2 million. However, um, they would, this body would ne then need to make an initial preliminary uh, assessment of whether this project will will identify will uh, will development net net benefit to the community and we've got Roman numeral language uh, uh, track so this language at 1b and under 50-93 allows for approval of a smaller project that still meets a threshold of 20 percent and the reason for that is because it can become administrative, administratively to deal with all of these uh, without some kind of a threshold. Uh, it's difficult to quantify profit with, these, with, with a project that would be $2 million for example. It would be very difficult. Having made that initial preliminary finding by this council, then the application would move forward and go through the uh, process uh, for review by the finance officer um, at 50-96. Uh, and what we've added is the sub B there, which requires the finance officer to do a, essentially a scoring analysis of that. And I understand that there is the ability to create those kinds of uh, a return on investment analysis that uh, would allow the finance officer to look at whether that essentially provides a, a quality of life, growth in the local economy, and a net economic benefit to the city, and then can make to the council um, the finance officer's recommendation for approval or denial, and then it's going to come back to the council again. And at that point, the council can can take the the recommendation of the finance office and decide whether to approve or deny the application. And then at that point, if, if there is an approval of the application, then it goes through the remaining sections, which allows for a 50% refund maximum of sales and use taxes paid to the city on the project. Okay, I, I just, one quick question, you said compare this to, uh, to Brookings. Is 50% their maximum also? Brookings has, it appears to me that they have a grant up to 100 percent. Okay, just curious. Um, Mike, you're the one that brought this request. Uh, I think before we entertain a motion, uh, it would be appropriate for you to just come tell us what you think. The, uh, the first thing I'd like to say is I'd just like to thank the council for being open to this conversation uh, regarding this ordinance. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Lynn, uh, Ron, and Carl uh, for working on this. Uh, we probably, as you're going to figure out here in a second, may not be on uh, complete agreement on this, but we certainly appreciate working with the city and uh, feel we have a very good uh, working relationship. Um, our, our preference, as I stated before, would be... Uh, for this request uh, to be, uh, as I stated previous, uh, possibly up to 100% on a case-by-case -case basis uh, with no limited dollar amount uh, if the project uh, follows at least one of the parameters uh, listed in here, one through seven, as Ron just spoke of. 
Uh, as I mentioned a few weeks back, uh, this amendment would further expand the tools we have to entice business recruitment, retention, and or expansion uh, here in Aberdeen. What we have simply come across is that many of the states which uh, surround South Dakota either do not charge sales tax on certain items, uh, specifically equipment, or they have the ability to, to waive this charge uh, up to 100% if they, if they choose to. Not every situation is obviously the same. Uh, furthermore, as we've uh, now talked about, Brookings, one of the communities which we often find ourselves in direct competition with, uh, has adopted a policy which allows them to, to waive up to 100% on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we feel that by having hard numbers in, in the sort of ordinance, uh, there, there is a possibility where we could end up discounting potential uh, great expansion, recruitment, or retention because every, every instance is different. Uh, for instance, you know, what if a company were to add 50 jobs to our economy at an average of $25 an hour uh, but only needs maybe, let's say, $500,000 worth of equipment? Uh, um, you know, a one-time rebate, if I do my math right, would be about $10,000, but that would equate to an annual payroll of $2.6 million. And uh, I've heard the mayor state previously on, on some numbers, Mike, I'm going to forget the number, but the average return is, what? what's that number? If you uh, do the math. There are, there are approximately 27,000 people employed in Brown County. And if you compare that to our total revenue of sales tax, second penny tax, and property tax, that's about 27 million right in that area. So every, uh, using that comparison, if you figure somebody's going to come in and, and get a job, uh, the city nets about $1,000. Okay. If you go by households, it's about 1400 if everybody that got a job brought a family. But if it's uh, just by number of employees, that's kind of a handy number to figure. Sure. Um, you know, if we if we choose to adopt the, or if you guys choose to adopt the policy as presented, uh, we feel that we're already setting ourselves at somewhat of a disadvantage in comparison with one of our other uh, larger competitors here. Um, and we certainly would have an advantage of being at minimum on a level, level playing field, and that would be good for potential growth here in Aberdeen. Uh, I would also like to mention we do have one particular instance uh, which would, would uh, qualify for this particular uh, option, and if, if we were able to maneuver through this on and uh, make the ordinance, they would be looking at, at doing a, a nice expansion here uh, in our community. So that would be our take on the ordinance as, uh, as presented by, by Ron and, and Lynn and Carl. Okay, so to open up the discussion, we would, uh, we would need a motion on uh, possible first reading of this ordinance. Move approval. Who is over here? Uh, motion Remley and uh, second by uh, Bunsness. Questions or comments or questions of Mike or questions? Anyone? Right. I move to amend the motion to uh, include an amendment to section 50-97, changing the first sentence to read that the refund shall be determined by city council resolution up to 100% of the sales and use taxes paid to the city with respect to the project. Is there a second? Second. Uh, we have a uh, uh, motion by Remley or by Ronin, second by Remley, which would effectively allow up to a uh, uh, hundred percent refund. So, questions are, are Rob, you would tell us but, why. <clears throat> thank you. You know, I guess uh, uh, consistent with uh, Mr. Bakerney's uh, comments, I'd like to give the council. Uh, discretion and authority to uh, match what our competitors are doing and uh, th this amendment would do that. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna vote against the amendment um, I would like to see the particular um, uh, investment similar to what Brookings does this this uh, investment process that they go through to determine whether there's a return uh, before I make any commitment to going 100% uh, with the the manufacturer that's already requested that we we do this. So I would like um, that to be done before we even make a determination whether 100% is appropriate or not. Well, I'm, I'm going to vote uh, for this. I am... Uh, Typically in favor of 
finding good people to put confidence in and, and then letting them do their job. And I have confidence in our development corp and in, and in Mike to uh, be judicious in the way that they approach this. And, and I don't know how many others of you have been involved in the, uh, the dark world of competition between and among cities for economic development. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world where every deal you make the next day, you, almost, you, you know, you, you got to make an, another one. It's very competitive. And we all want the same thing. We all want more businesses to come here. We all want to do it in a responsible way that doesn't unfairly uh, uh, give benefits to people that don't deserve them. I think having the opportunity for the council to choose between 50% and 100% would make Mike's job easier. And yet we would still, as the council, retain the ability to push him back if we didn't like what he did. So, you know, we all want the same thing. We're elected to make decisions. Let's leave this open-ended and make the decisions one at a time based on what's in front of us. That's, uh, that's my outlook on it. Then I would suggest that he just comes back to the council every time this happens and we make a determination at that time if we want to amend the, the uh, ordinance that uh, is before us that, will, that should remain at 50%. I mean, if this, you know, a year ago we went with large projects and that seemed to be the, the thing that was going to solve the issue. Now we're back. Um, and, and to some degree, I'm, I'm not comfortable with um, giving 100% away because of what we just, you know, did we listen to the budget presentation of what AGP, um, what that sales tax brought us and what it cost? Now, is it a cost? Maybe, you know, we can argue that point. I'm not willing to do that. But if we would have went 100% with AGP, which would almost make more sense than someone that's not going to do any realty improvements, um, it would almost make more sense because we we're probably going to get more return there. Um, that would have put us in the hole with sales tax. So these are decisions um, that affect every citizen in this community. And the, the, the items that we can do, you know, we talk about parks and rec, quality of life things. Um, you know, I, I want to I first see if this is going to be a major, major thing where we're going to be coming back to this council um, monthly, semi-annually, because people want to in, you know, buy new capital yeah. equipment. I agree, Dave. You know, we could... We can always change whatever we do. If that 50 percent's there, we could change it if Mike wants to bring us something. Meanwhile, he's got to tell the people that he's dealing with, there's an ordinance against what I'm doing here, and it's going to take a process of probably at least a month to change that. Or what I'm saying is the result would be the same. Whether we change it or don't change it when they bring it, or whether we leave it at 0 percent or 50 percent here, the result for us as a council is exactly the same in that we have the decision whether it's 50% or 100%. Where the difference lies is when Mike is sitting in front of those people talking to them about what the options may be and what the process is. And I just think if it's easier for Mike, it's better. If we don't like what he does. Every well, single time it comes up, we can say no. Well, but that's what happened now. That's what happened in this particular case. There's been a commitment given, and now we're trying to write an ordinance to get that commitment taken care of. So I'm not comfortable with that process. Can I make a couple sure. comments? Uh, first off, to, to your point you just made, Dave, um, we, made a, we made a decision as a development corporation because of what you just stated, that we as the development corporation are going to take care of the commitment because of that issue. So you will not see that one come before you. This is going to be for everything after. 
So, um, but we're still writing an ordinance for because of that. So, I mean, really, in essence, we, we would do, I mean, you could still do the same thing that we just went through here. You could come back and say, hey, I've got something. And, and part of it is just transparency to our citizens that here, we're, we're thinking that this is a good idea. We've gone through the return on investment, and we see this as a, um, a viable project. So I, I, I still think we could do the 50% and um, have you come report to us if there's any addition, you know, any new projects that are coming forward. Well, if I read the way that Ron has drafted this, and Ron, please correct me if I'm wrong, but that would have to be the case. Mm -hmm. We have to come and request this every single time. Mm -hmm. We can't just do it, right? Right, right, right. So Are I we think talking what about you're, with the amendment or just as as drafted here, as even either either, either way. way, I we still can't tell somebody you're going <clears> to <throat> get a hundred percent. We're going to have to say that we're going to have to go through the process and oh, come before the council. Yeah, I agree. We can't make yeah. that statement. There's Jennifer, applications to be Jennifer, done. Jennifer, you haven't had a chance to speak. Um. Well, I, I was not here when this was originally presented, and um, I'm, I'm going to speak in regards to the entire ordinance, not just this, um, not just this proposed change. I'm going to vote against it. And the reason I'm going to vote against, I'm going to vo vote against the entire thing. Um, we're hearing from Mike, and I appreciate that he is presenting one um, one side of a um, very multi-sided story, and I appreciate everything that staff did in working on this, but I don't think we're hearing from all sides in this thing. I don't see any um, small business or medium-sized business or large business owners sitting in the audience tonight telling us, yes, you need to do this because this is going to help my business, which is already here in our community and is growing. I can name a handful of people right off the top of my head who are business owners in this community who this who are growing business owners in this community who this isn't going to do a darn thing for. Um, I think that there are lots of ways that we can help grow business in our community without giving, you know, some business who promises to bring two jobs or four jobs or ten jobs, you know, how do we know they're going to stay? When we have somebody who's here and growing those businesses, they're more likely to stay, especially if they're a small business owner who lives here. Um, you know, these big businesses who promise they're going to bring these jobs in, I mean, what guarantee do we have that they're going to stay more than two, three, six months? I, I just, I don't like this. I, I mean, I'm, my proposal would be table it for six months. We, how, you said a year, Dave. I don't think it's been a year since we passed the original ordinance for the processing mm -hmm. plant. How long has it been? Uh, year 2016. Yeah. It's been over a year. Okay. It has been over a year. It does fly, I guess, <laughs> especially when you're, it gets well, worse anyway, the older we all get. I don't I'm not um, I'm not satisfied with where this is and I am going to be voting against it tonight. What else? Alan? I also respect the work that was done by staff and I'm most comfortable with the way it was originally written rather than with the amendment. Anybody else? Um, like I say, I, I don't think I'd ever vote to give away 100% of the sales tax anyway because that um, sales tax is relied upon to provide our fire protection, police protection, roads. We have water issues that we need to solve, and a lot of this goes a long way to, to doing it. 50%, I think, would be something that I probably wouldn't exceed. So for me, asking for... An amendment to change it up to 100 percent to me make doesn't make a difference because i i could never conscionably say to our tax payers that we're going to give all of the increase away and you're on the hook for providing this fire protection police protection without any return on investment because they could take a property tax um, through the five-year method of a reduced property tax so we're not receiving full property tax on some of these projects until year five or six Okay. Right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
I'm here as counsel for Development Corporation. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak. I look at this, I've worked through this ordinance with Mike and talked to him about it, and um, really a way to look at this is a personal property TIF. You invest um, all the time in future projects in the form of real estate TIFs to give an opportunity for the tax to go to a benefit to allow a development to occur that normally wouldn't. Uh, this is akin to that. I'm not going to say it's a direct analogy, but when you are enticing a business to come to Aberdeen um, and you are able to offer them an incentive in the form of a tax abatement, that essentially is an investment in the business that's coming uh, with the prospect of providing jobs to, to generate the sales tax on a recurring and annual basis and to infuse money into the economy. So it is a one-time expenditure up front, um, for a long-term gain in the end. So I do think it is different. The other thing is, as I think has been kind of pointed out, it is a process that requires city council approval each and every time. The benefit to Mike is when he is at a negotiation or a competitive situation, as the mayor has pointed out, is to be able to say that the city does allow up to 100% rebate provided the city council approves it, is different than saying all we can do is 50%, but I can go ask for a special exemption. The other thing it's a bit akin to is a variance hearing. You as a body sit and listen to circumstances case by case as each of these may, came up, may come up. And there, be a, there may be a standard set of rules which is going to remain on the books, but if you give yourself the right in the right situation to create a variance from the normal set of rules and grant up to 100%, that's what you're all empowered to do and, and, and really good at it. You're, you're, you're able to analyze the facts in front of you and decide whether this special case warrants a variance from what would be the normal and ordinary case of collecting the full sales tax as opposed to rebating any of it. So thank you. Anyone else? Oh, I'm, I'm reminded of a saying, uh, there's no point in asking about the quality of the air if it's time to take a breath. You know, we can talk about what's fair, what's not fair, what's, you know, different implications of this. But we have to understand the atmosphere we're living in. We're living in an atmosphere where every city in the country wants every business that we're after. And the reason I'm going to vote for this is the air that we're living in, when we're ready to take a breath and send Mike out, I want him to have every possible tool there and yet retain the ability of this council to say no. And if we adopt this amendment, we could do that. So, anybody else? Comments before we vote on the amendment? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Olson. Um, I would be in favor of the uh, amendment. Uh, as long as the council has final decision, uh, I, I, I agree that this provides a tool for promoting Aberdeen. And, um, uh, as long as the council has the final say, I, I would... Uh, approve the amendment. Mark? Uh, I agree with, with Mike and Mike. Uh, we hand out TIFs to just about anybody who comes and asks for one. And uh, it's it's an economic growth tool. And I think this would help Mike and his recruiting. And uh, I really do believe that uh, it's just an added benefit that he can share with the uh, Possible future businesses that might open up here, so I would I would vote for this. You know, you know, for me though, this is different than a TIF because we're not losing any potential revenue from a TIF. Our revenue stays the same. We may still have to provide services for that area, but at the same point, we're still gaining property tax based on the current valuation. But if the business property. doesn't come, the revenue stays the same. And I don't. I think in the same case with MFG, we didn't deny the TIF for MFG. We gladly gave. The MFG and the Development Corp, a TIF for that building. AGP didn't want one. If AGP would have wanted a TIF, we would have gladly have given it to them because there's a real economic benefit because now instead of giving the sales tax rebate and, and not getting the property tax, you know, it's like, okay, I'm putting off the property tax, but I'm getting the added sales tax from it. Um, um, like I say, we have a mechanism which they get 50% back and We've only only had one project, and like I say, I we've had no problem if someone wants a TIF to put up a new building. I'd support those every day of the week. But if someone wants to buy a bunch of equipment, that might be a little bit different. 
Lynn, do you have uh, something? Yeah, I just I kind of ask a question for a point of clarification. When you at, offered your amendment, what section were you amending? 5096. 90 90 90 90 90 90 90 90 90 okay. The first 50 line. 50 to 100. Okay. Okay. Well, well can so I? So then, in effect, by doing that, it doesn't matter whether it's subsection A or B, it would all be the same because otherwise, if you had a smaller project and A remained at 50%, you would, if you had a larger project, you would try to break it into a smaller project where you get a 100% refund versus a 50% refund. So you're saying 100% potential for 100% for project 9, 1, a as well as B. Your intent is for all of them, right? Rob? It, it was actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I just wanted that yeah, as a clarification. Okay. Was there a hand up over here that I missed? Well, you know, I was just going. You know, my yes, I was just going to make one additional comment. And actually, at uh, um, Clint, I, I, I appreciated his comments. Um, one of the the additional flexibilities this would give us is sometimes we may not want to give fifty. Okay, the way it's written today, it way. is 50. Okay, yeah. maybe we want to give 30. Maybe maybe uh, Mike can do his magic with 20. Um, uh, you know, some in some projects aren't going to justify, certainly aren't going to justify 100. You, you've made that clear, and I think you're right. Most projects won't. Um, but some projects may, may not justify 50. And yeah. I think and uh, it, it doesn't hurt to give this council uh, the ability to uh, look at each project individually. And, and actually, that's one thing is is with this ordinance I do like is that we do have a final say. We have to pass it by resolution. I like that part of the, the ordinance. To me, you know, the 50%, you know, it, it's, you know, when, yeah, not every project we get 100%, but would we really, really ever want to give someone just 20%? I, I don't know. You're right. It can go the other way. And I was aware of that fact, but most people are going to try and get the maximum they can get because they're business people, no different than anyone else. And then you put it up to us to determine what these businesses can get. The fairness in this is that anyone, and I'm not even opposed to the lower limits on some of these items. I'm not opposed to that. It's guess what? I want it fair and a little impartiality out of it at the same point. So we're not picking and choosing which benefit what we feel is a benefit and not because you might have that small business owner who maybe only gets 50 percent but then another business owner might get 100 percent, and it puts us at a disadvantage where it looks like we're picking and choosing which businesses if there was a clause in there that said this was only for new businesses that we could go up to 100 percent, i'm all for that also but not everything because now you're sitting there saying that this business might be worth more of a refund than this business even though they might have similar things it Dave, takes a little Dave, impartiality you've been for a long time uh, i just want to make sure that i understand the spirit of the the way it's written right now in blue is that we have a choice of either zero percent or fifty percent is that the way that that reads mm -hmm. right now right now so if if, if, it, if a project is approved then it's fifty percent so we have no latitude with the way the language is written correct correctly. currently yeah mike did you have something to add yeah i just clint uh I, I appreciate your your comments, but I just in in the world that that we live in in economic development, it's not everything is equal. It's just not, and we pick and choose every day. Uh, in fact, I would tell you that ninety five percent of the projects that come before us are don't last more than a day. We're just not interested. They just don't fit for a number of reasons. And uh, that not only has to deal with, with new businesses looking to come into Aberdeen, but more so on businesses that come to us looking to expand um, who are already here. Uh, the large majority of, of time, we can certainly step them through and help them, but again, probably 95% of the time at least, there's no, nothing we can do for them financially. And I would and like to help those small businesses that are here that can expand because they are here, they're vested in our community. I, I do feel very strongly that if you change the ordinance as Rob has amended, then you're going to have the ability to do so. Well, because I think most, even, most of them, Clint, are not coming in looking for $2 million worth of equipment. 
most of them are a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. You know, they're when you have a smaller business that employs, you know, I can think of one right off the top of my head. They employ eleven people. Mm-hmm. Well, they they're looking for a capital expenditure. Um, well, they actually just did it in the last six months. They had to buy a piece of equipment that probably cost them, I think it was right north of about $130,000. Well, it, it didn't create any more. It, they still had 11 employees, mm-hmm. and they had some contracts. So my discussion with them was simply there is no financial incentive in terms of any sort of rebate or grant that either we can get for you from the development corporation or from the city or from the county. There are a couple of programs that you can apply for from the state uh, if you'd like to. And most of those were just low interest loans, you know, because most banking institutions are only going to loan five years on equipment. Well, there's some programs that exist through the GOED that have, you know, a 10 year, 10 year loan commitment. So they were able to secure one of those. And that's how that sort of piece comes to fruition. But in the case, you know, if a, if a company wants to expand and, you know, the hard part is, as I understand everybody's points, they're all very excellent points on both sides of the argument. Uh, I think our main point here, guys, is if you just had the ability to make the determination on every single entity uh, and every single case that came forward. And I also want to be clear, I do not believe that this is going to open some sort of floodgate. We don't do this often. In fact, I can tell you, uh, we have not done any sort of tax incentive or tax break since AGP. Haven't even talked about one until this particular instance came up. And this particular instance came up because this company that came and requested this also has a location in Brookings. Well, they received 100% in Brookings. They also received 100% of the state tax back in Brookings. So when they came here, even though it is a smaller expansion, uh, it's you know it's around five million dollars worth of equipment with approximately eight jobs. Of course, they wanted the same thing. Um, we don't see this on a on a daily, weekly, not even a monthly basis. It's not all that often. Is the state giving them the rebate as well? For if, if they come here, is it, are, are they getting a rebate from the state as well? The, the company, just to be clear, Mark, the company's already here. Okay. They're going to add about $5 million worth of equipment and, and hire approximately eight people. Okay. Yes, and the and state they, has already committed to give them the 100%. Well, the state already has. Okay. So. The state already has it. I have it in writing. Okay. Yes. Um, the thing is, is and I'm going to use the example of your small $130,000 project, the ordinance, if it passes even with this amendment, that project wouldn't qualify for any rebate because yeah, of I, the 20% limit. I know that, and that's what I told them, is that there's, there, I don't expect that to. I think that's where you have to realize that not every project is going to be the same. Oh, and, every, no project is the same, and I do yeah. realize that. But my thing is, is if I'm, if I, if I'm going to keep 11 employees here, or maybe they even add or have future expansion plans, and it's not a million dollars, maybe it might be worth us to look at um, some of those limits. But at the same point, you know, do we grant a hundred percent? of that sales tax back or is 50% good enough? I guess you're right. I don't know. But all I know is that when you add jobs and people in this community, they expect services and they expect us to provide for it. And at least we get a little something from that 50% to where we can do that. Question regarding <clears throat> um, amendments versus resolution. Are amendments a, a uh, higher order um, or they're, they're much more difficult to get through than a resolution uh, amendment an ordinance amendment mm-hmm. yes yes requires us and this re- the, you know we talk about that the city has to prove this but it's by a simple resolution correct right so I mean if this is not if this is not a Monthly, semi-annual. It's been two years since AGP comes in. Um, come back and make an amendment to the existing ordinance to um, to increase that percentage and vet it out. Be transparent to the council instead of having it as a simple 
resolution where we we do those all the time it seems to be a low bar in my in my mind with the um, uh, the change that's been proposed does that change anything where the staff has a recommendation I know what the what original recommendation was but um, of what you saw or what anybody saw here as staff <coughs> the amendment does that change your view of what it does to your budget hey I, I'm looking at this in a little different way I'm looking at it from the finances of the city and uh, when you look at the four-year average of the sales tax uh, gain as far as increase it's been less than one percent and I understand that uh, these type uh, rebates can also uh, give us growth within sales tax as well as property taxes but uh, maybe I'm looking at it in a conservative manner but it's not as though our sales tax growth has been appreciable uh, whereas when we start doing rebates I question as to how those rebates will affect our operations currently now I realize that there's been a Supreme Court decision and a matter of fact I gave you a copy of what happens after the Supreme Court ruling where our revenues may rebound to where they were previously but I don't feel that we're in the same mode uh, in the last five-year period we've actually seen decreases in our sales tax to a certain extent from a growth perspective compared to the past and maybe it will return to where we were in the past and so I'm asking that you be cautious about what you do here until we have a better feel of where the revenues but won't won't that be taken into consideration under the way the ordinance is currently written or the, or the amendment that we ask your advice of where we're at according to the budget and say hey you're going uh, we, we don't have this we can't do this yes, and then it's our decision from there to yes, either yes, go forward or not yes it is and with this as I understand this gives us more leeway to go below 50% as well as above 50% I guess what if I'm we trying were, to say as a tool I hope in the beginning that there is awareness to the fact that we're in a fragile situation to a certain degree and as we grow uh, you know the availability of this tool can grow too uh, also but I hope that in the beginning we're in a cautious state until we see changes okay we're ready to vote can I clarify the the amendment um, would be the first sentence of section 50-97 which everybody is looking at but we would replace it with this sentence the council by resolution may determine a refund up to 100 percent of the sales and use taxes paid to the city with respect to an approved project does that sound okay that's correct close okay. to what I said it isn't okay. yet, but that's okay let's vote okay one last thing sorry what's it why why a resolution could we also do this in an ordinance where it requires two readings <laughs> yes <laughs> you know I, I just that would be now oh um, one last time one last point and kind of going I think where Dave was going is that this council has two responsibilities one is yeah you get excited about potential for new jobs but there's this other responsibility of fiduciary responsibility and I think that will be the challenge for us and I think it's um, it, it, it will become real easy for us to um, approve these all the time. I don't. I. I, I don't see. You now can't predict what future councils will do, but I don't see that we've been real. Um, I want to. I don't want to say frugal, but that's the that's the poor word. But I mean. We have some real challenges here that Lynn just laid out. Now, do we, if we don't have the jobs, we don't see the revenue. I understand that argument. Uh, we don't see the investment. But again, we don't even know if what the investment, return on investment on this particular project it would be a great example because I could see more of these types of projects coming than getting 
an AGP large project to come into Aberdeen. I would think that some of the the, um, the businesses that we have here right now would take advantage of of this amended ordinance. And the challenge to us is to remember uh, what what we're responsible for here, and that's providing services for our citizens. Mark. I would love to have the challenge to have more business come to Aberdeen, and if this is going to help, let's do it. I'd love to have the challenge to make the decision one at yes. a time. Yeah. Uh, Are we ready to vote? Uh, Finally, getting back to my thing is, is, basically, we could do this by ordinance as well. That would be a different amendment. I know that would be, but well, that's something. Let's I take care of this one then. Yeah. So we are ready to vote. Uh, Carl, roll call for the amendment as defined by the city attorney. Remley? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Slate Hansen? No. Johnson? No. Bunsness? No. Olson? Aye. Rux? No. Mayor Leveson? Aye. Five ayes, four noes. Okay, back to the uh, primary motion for first reading of the ordinance as amended. Questions or comments? I'll be bringing probably an amendment next week, but I want to work with the attorney okay. to make sure it's right. That's good. Is there uh, also uh, regarding this with going to 100%, I think you mentioned before, Lynn, that businesses, the potential of splitting up a project, well, it doesn't matter now if everything's under 100%. Uh, I thought you had kind of a separation between large projects and small projects, and I was concerned that you were giving 100% to small projects and leaving large projects at 50%. Okay, okay, and I got if you. in fact it's 100% for all, it doesn't matter. Otherwise, I could see the larger projects trying to split up where they were yeah. going to get 100%, and there would be no incentive yeah. for it. I understand. Yeah. Other questions on the main motion? Uh, Carl, first reading on the main motion. Uh, Ordinance uh, 180801 as amended. Councilmember Rux? Aye. Olson? Aye. Bunsness? No. Johnson? No. Slate Hansen? No. Lundsman? Aye. Runane? Aye. Remley? Aye. Mayor Leveson? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Mike. As I said, we all, 5445, whatever, we all want the same thing. We want you to be able to do your job. And do it in a way we can deal with, so keep up the work. Uh, next item on our agenda is the uh, public hearing regarding the 2019 Capital Improvement Program, and I believe for the 14th consecutive year, we have <laughs> not a single person from the public here, Cody's here. to uh, to comment on this uh, $9 million worth of work uh, and the second penny. So I would entertain a motion from the council to approve the Capital Improvement Program provided to us by... Lynn and uh, his department heads. So moved. Second. Motion Johnson, second by Slade Hansen. Questions on it from the council? All in favor? Oops, uh, roll call, Carl. Councilmember Renley? Aye. Renane? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Slade Hansen? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Bunsness? Aye. Olson? Aye. Rux? Aye. Mayor Leveson? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, item C, as we said, has been withdrawn at the request of the uh, people who made the application. Uh, item D is an application for justice assistance grant from the U.S. Department of uh, Justice, and I didn't look to see who's this come from. Chief McNeil. Chief? All right. Thank you. So originally we applied to the justice assistance grant with the U.S. Department of Justice. Uh, at the time uh, we filled this or completed this grant, we were looking at two police vehicles for this grant. In the grant application, it didn't specify how much we would be eligible for. Uh, as time went by, we were notified that our allotment for this grant would be this $14,506. That wouldn't necessarily cover the cost of two police cruisers. We're still eligible for this funds, and we can reallocate it towards different things, to, from equipment to overtime, uh, different um, utilization for this. But we do need to have this hearing and, and get your approval to utilize these grant funds. Move to approve. Second. Motion Ronane, second by Rux. Any questions? Carl? Councilmember Rux? Aye. Olson? Aye. Bunsness? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Slate Hansen? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Remley? Aye. Mayor Leveson? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, item E is a uh, 
change order and subsequent pay estimate in the amount of $166,601 to Sharp Enterprises for a public works <coughs> project. Robin. We did have some minor variances on the uh, amount of slump that was uh, in the concrete uh, for sake of, of uh, your use. This is basically how wet the concrete is and uh, creates an issue for how they place it and um, it actually during warmer days is a little easier to finish because you've got a little more time however it does create a problem with uh, edge slumping and things and, and it's harder to match the second the curb and gutter or the second slab up to it so there is a slight deduct there um, the strengths are all good so that's that's the good news is that we didn't compromise the strength of the slab uh, and so we do have a minor deduct, uh, but we are recommending the pay estimate in the amount of $166,601. Move approval. Second. Motion Ruck, second by Lundsman. Questions of Robin on this? So what was the deduct for? Slump. I know, but how does that, it's, you're paying for the concrete, so how does the deduct? deduction come into it the deduction comes in based on we want to have uh, a slump in that two inch range yep. and there were some slumps that were up in closer to the four inch range so it it's does a settle a little yeah. more and penalty. it's harder to hold grade so you're basically a penalty yes okay any other questions uh carl we have a motion and a second to pay the bill roll call please council member remley aye ronane aye lundsman aye slate hansen aye. johnson aye. bunsness aye. Olson. Aye. Rucks. Aye. Mayor Leeson. Aye. Motion carries. Cody, you're next. Uh, three items from the airport. Uh, start with number one. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the first item before you is uh, very preliminary work uh, seeking your approval uh, to do some exploration under our general aviation apron uh, through this contract. Um, what we're trying to do here is uh, develop on, on the forefront uh, some plans uh, to submit to the FAA. There is this year an additional billion dollars, or I should say over the next three years, um, in funding that Congress has authorized two airports uh, which sounds like quite a bit, but it's less than a third of what's normally allocated every year. Um, so it's going to be a very competitive process. We're just trying to set ourselves up in that competition um, to uh, hopefully get some of those uh, billion dollars of additional funds for a GA apron project. So moved. Second. Motion Johnson and second uh, by Ronane. Questions on this one? Uh, the payment $17,640 to American Engineering Testing. Carl? Councilmember Rux? Aye. Olson? Aye. Bunsness? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Slate Hansen? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Ronin? Aye. Remley? Aye. Mayor Leeson? Aye. Motion carries. Number two, Cody. Uh, number two is a project that we've been uh, working on uh, and planning for for approximately the last year and a half, um, $854,067. Uh, to JBT Technologies. Uh, we went out for bid for a new passenger boarding bridge uh, and they were the low bidder. Um, they have a very good reputation in the industry uh, and I think I discussed it briefly with uh, the council before but we're trying to set up uh, uh, the, uh, air, the ter current terminal excuse me for the maximum amount of flexibility moving forward um, and when I say that uh, we're working to maximize the range of aircraft that we could serve with this new jet bridge. And hopefully as Aberdeen continues to grow in the future, if there's ever a need that arises for a second jet bridge, we're trying to make sure that we can utilize the current apron and build that second jet bridge on there. Move approval. Second. Uh, motion Johnson, second by Roney. Mayor So you have to wait to the FAA to say you can do this yet or? Um, so this is, uh, we will submit with your approval here our, our grant offer. They have the money uh, just waiting for the paperwork. We know what we want. We just don't know if they're going to give it. <laughs> <laughs> um, roll call, please, Carl. Councilmember Remley. Aye. Ronin. Aye. Lundsman. Aye. Slate Hansen. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Bunsness. Aye. Olson. Aye. Rux. Aye. Mayor Leibson. Aye. Motion carries. Number three, go to. Uh, 3A before you, $8,005. Uh, that is for Helms & Associates Assistance. Uh, they've worked extensively with us on development of the plans for this passenger boarding bridge. 
Um, and this isn't uh, to the full extent of the contract we have with them. We're going to continue working uh, with them and, and JBT uh, on that plans and specs development. Uh, we hope to have JBT in town here over the next few weeks and do a, a site visit to start getting the plans in place and, and things in motion. Move payment request 3A. Second. Uh, motion business, second by uh, Johnson to uh, make the uh, payments. Carl? Councilmember Rux? Aye. Olson? Aye. Bunsness? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Slate Hansen? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Ronan? Aye. Remley? Aye. Mayor Leveson? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, 3B, before you, uh, $4,479.15. Uh, we just continue uh, working on our wildlife hazard assessment uh, with the uh, certified wildlife biologist. This is for the sixth monthly visit, and uh, staff right now uh, today was out there for the seventh monthly visit that we have. Move to approve payment 3B. Second. Motion uh, Johnson and uh, second by Rux. Questions on it? Carl? Councilmember Remley? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Slate Hansen? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Bunsness? Aye. Olson? Aye. Rux? Aye. Mayor Leveson? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Cody. Uh, IMG is bill submitted for payment. City Departments, uh, 1,058,171. Eh? City Boards, 376,623. Northern Electric Services, 4,484. Uh, the Ordway uh, uh, charge for Western Area Power, 10,040. Payment to CH Diagnostic for the water treatment plant work, $415. Dependable sanitation, August recycling, 23126. Sludge hauling by Morrison at the water plant, 16383. $500 to Mike Shannon for a water service disconnect. $500 uh, to South Dakota Underground Inc. for a disconnect. U.S. Bank uh, principal and interest uh, on a loan, 17334 uh, August Cobra Dental Payment to Nationwide 161 Premium Specialty Vehicles and Ambulance 2018 Ford Ambulance $161,555 UPS charge is $45 Helms and Associates Wetland Site Monitoring $3179 Ryan's Carpet Cleaning uh, Work at the Airport $789 AT&T Access for iPads at the Airport $170 and Monthly Copier Charge to Marco at the Airport $55 Move to approve. Second. Motion running. Second by Remley. Questions on any of them? Carl. Councilmember Rux. Aye. Olson. Aye. Brunsness. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Slate Hansen. Aye. Lundsman. Aye. Ronane. Aye. Remley. Aye. Mayor Leveson. Aye. Motion carries. Lynn. Uh, I just wanted to bring to your attention within the city manager's report for this uh, particular meeting, there was an excellent article that I uh, copied from the Retailers Association where it says, what's next after the Supreme Court ruling? And it provides some detail as to what the Department of Revenue furnished to the Retailers Association, such as what steps will the Department of Revenue take to implement the tax changes now that the Supreme Court has ruled in South Dakota favor? When does the tax go into effect on the out-of-state retailers and likewise the law applies to online retailers with 200 or more separate transactions in South Dakota or with 100,000 or more in gross sales in South Dakota. So it gives some details as to the expectations as what we can expect to see within the next year. Okay. Uh, I want to thank Mike for uh, uh, taking the time to call in and I also want to thank the council once again tonight as opposed to different from councils in other cities that I've seen. Uh, we can get through a five to four vote without any personal acrimony and we're really good at this we've had not that many times where we've had a split down the middle of the council uh, but we always seem to handle it uh, uh, in a in a manner that's uh, respectful of each other and I, I appreciate that it doesn't happen in every city uh, anybody with anything before we go We'd probably have more people watch if we did do that, though. We would. <laughs> I think that Sioux Falls, uh, those Sioux Falls meetings get a pretty good rating. <laughs> Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion, Slate Hansen, second by Rumley. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned.